One of the most important things we can do in post-production as filmmakers, besides all the things we do to serve story, is to back up our project, back up our database, and back up specific settings like keyboard mappings, things like that. So that's what this lesson is about. I want to show you how to back up the Resolve database. I want to show you how to back up individual projects, how to back up keyboard settings, preferences, these types of things, so then you have it and you know how to restore it if something happens. Let's do it. We are at the edit page. I'm in a very small test project for this class. I'm going to hit Shift-1 and this screen will look familiar. If it doesn't look like this and it looks like this, click your projects icon. And there we go. The left column shows our project libraries. All of your projects are kept in a project library. So if you just installed Resolve, you probably only see local database. That's the default. And you can have multiple projects in there, okay? And if you click I, Reveal in Finder, it'll show you where Resolve keeps that project library, okay? You might be thinking, why have more than one project library? Well, it could be an organizational tool. Like I have Reckoning isolated, and I only have Reckoning related stuff in this project library. It can also be a troubleshooting step. I ran into an issue with Reckoning where the project was taking a long time to open. So I moved it into a clean project library just to see if that would help. And it actually didn't, that wasn't the issue, but that was a troubleshooting step that I took. Let me show you how simple it is. You would click Add Project Library, you would name it, and choose where you want it to be kept. I'm gonna choose an external drive. I'm just going to create a folder called test. Click open, and then here's my new library, create. No projects, but there it is. And so I could import a project and go from there. Let's jump down to the write and direct class library. I added this library just for this lesson. The first thing we're going to do is back up a project. So how would you back up one of these projects? Very simple. Right click, export project. What I do is I create a resolve backups folder, and in there I create a folder for each film project, okay? And then inside those, I create subfolders with the current date of the backup. So as an example, and then click Save. That's simple. And if I jump to Finder, there we go. Resolve creates a .drp file, okay? And that is your entire project, but it's not any of your media, and that's what you need to understand. When we back up projects or even a project library, it does not back up any of your audio, camera takes, none of that. It's only the project itself. So your sequences, the bins you create, your color grades, your visual effects, all of that stuff is backed up, but not the media. I cover backing up your media in a separate lesson. So that's one way to back up a project. Another way, let's jump inside. If you're in your project at any time while you're working, on macOS you can hit Command E, and it kicks off the same export. I'm gonna jump back out, Shift-1. So let's say I lost my computer, but fortunately I have backups of all my projects on my external media drive. So I've got a new computer, Resolve is installed, and what, I, and what do you do? You'd simply select the database, click Import, Go to your backups folder, choose the date, and double click on that DRP file. That easy. And there it is, look at that. Nice, right? Again, it's not restoring media, it just restored the project. Jump back out, shift one. So that's how you back up projects and restore a project. Now let's say you have your project, you didn't lose your computer, but something happened, you deleted a sequence by accident or a bunch of clips, and you need to restore. Well, you can leave your current project there. Again, just click import, go to that DRP file, double click, and it's gonna ask you to name it because there's a project in there with that same name. So I'm just gonna call it Film One Restore, okay. And there we go. And so this is a way to jump in and grab a sequence or you can just go with this project once you verify that it's all there and it's everything you need. So I could just delete Film One. Actually, I don't have the delete, why? Because Film One is technically still open. So what I'll do is I'll open my Restore, which you would do anyway because you gotta verify everything's in there. And now that that's the current project, I can remove Film One. And now just right click, rename, you're back in business, okay? So that's a way to back up and restore a project. Now let's say you wanna back up an entire project library. For example, let's say I wanna back up all the projects in local database. So I'm gonna back up this entire project library. Click the I, click back up, browse to my folder, and now I'll create a new folder called database. Create a folder for the database I'm backing up and the date. And then save, back up, there we go. Jump back to Finder, and there it is, .diskdb. Now let's say you wanted to restore a project library. Well, this icon here will let you do that. Restore, you would again just browse to that backup, database, local, and there it is, disk DB file. Double click it, it's gonna ask you to name it. And if you click create, it's gonna bring up this window. So what's this about? Well, it wants to know where you wanna keep the database. So the default for local, remember, is on your computer, but you can also create a database on your external drive, whatever you want. So I'd click browse, and I'm just gonna put it in test right now. Create, restore. 
Restore successful, okay? But if you restore a database, then it brings all those projects back in with that database. And if you wanted to remove a database, click the I and click remove. Small note, if you remove it from here, it does not remove it from your hard drive. So first you wanna do reveal and finder, to remember where that was stored so that you can manually remove the folder later. All right, so now you know how to back up a project and restore a project and you know how to back up and restore a database. What else do you need to know? Let's jump into a project and let's go to resolve preferences. Go to user, project, save and load. So this is important. Actually, side note, load settings, you never want this checked. Load all timelines when opening projects. That'll make projects take forever to open if you have a lot of timelines. So keep that unchecked. Okay, save settings. We want all of these checked. This is gonna back up your timelines and your projects while you're working, okay? And you can tell it how often. Back up the current project every 60 minutes, and then again, once every four hours, and then again, a daily backup once a day, okay? And then here's the backup location. By default, it's putting them on your computer. You can change that here, all right? Now let's say you've been working, you've got auto saves going and you mess something up in your timeline and you can't command Z out of it. And you're like, ah, I need a backup. And crud, I haven't done a backup for a week. What would you do? Well, this is when those auto saves come in handy. Hit shift one. And these are new, so it won't have the info. So let me jump to reckoning. If I right click on the project and go down to project backups, here are my auto saves. So I can see the date, right? So just choose the date and load it up. And like restoring, it's gonna ask you for a name. And it finished, I can see it back there, so I'm gonna close this box. There we go. So I have a restored project from an autosave. Pretty cool, right? I'm gonna delete that. Now another type of backup. If you right click on a project and choose Export Project Archive, this will back up not just the project, but all the media that's used in the sequences in your project, okay? It's not gonna back up all the media and all the bins, it's gonna back up what's actually used in your sequences. So this would be a way to back up your film for archival purposes. Once you're completely done with it and you're like, you know what, I do have a lot of camera takes, that, but I don't want it for behind the scenes or anything fun in the future, I don't need any of it, I just want what's in the sequences. You could export an archive to an external drive, and of course you'd wanna verify it once, you, once it did it, but that's a way to back up your film, lose the stuff that you're not using, and kind of condense that down. I'm gonna jump back into one of these. So we just looked at auto saving. Now what else do we need to talk about when we're talking about backups? What's something we rely on? Our keyboard mappings. Command option K brings that up. I'm gonna hit the three dot menu here, export preset, and then choose the one I wanna export. Theater 11 is my preset. Go back to that same external drive to backups, create a folder, the date, create, save. Okay, and then if you ever needed to import that, three dot menu, import. There we go. What's something else? Well, our project. If we don't want to redo our project settings, then we need to keep a backup. Three dot menu, and I haven't created a preset, so you'd first create a preset of your project settings. So I'd do save current settings as preset, three dot menu again, film one, export preset. And again, the same process, okay? Create a separate folder for your project. And the last topic for this lesson is your preferences. Go back to preferences, three dot menu. I have saved these as a preset already, but you can save your preferences here, right? And name it. And then once you've done that, export preset, there we go. And so with those backups, if anything happened to your computer, you know you could successfully restore your database, restore a project, restore your keyboard settings, restore your project settings, and restore your preferences. Backing this stuff up is a big deal. And the day that you need it and you don't have it, you'll realize that. So ideally avoid that day and work this stuff into your schedule, all right? And if you like this stuff and you're a beginning filmmaker, you need to check out my online film school, writedirect.co. Write and Direct is about this. It's about teaching you the craft and saving you money so that the money you didn't spend on traditional film school, you can buy gear and continue making movies. Because here's the sobering truth that you will realize regardless of what school you go to. If you're a directing major and you graduate, the, the film industry doesn't care about your thesis project. They don't care if you graduated with honors. They don't even care that you went to film school. Your objective after film school is to begin making movies, to begin getting experience and credits behind your name, but you have to fund it. And if you spent all of your savings on film school, you're in a tough spot because all the gear you had access to goes away. You have to pay rent and all of these things in, in a city like Los Angeles, pretty expensive. So, Write and Direct is here to teach you the craft from development through post-production because I want you to know how to do it all so that you can move your career forward. 
So if you have a gaffer that's doing you a favor, but they get a paid gig and they can't show up, you don't have to shut down production because you know how to light. If you can't afford a color grader, you can grade. On and on and on. This is what this training is about. Check it out, writedirect.co. I really hope to see you there. And you can also contact me directly off the site if you have any questions. And if not there, I hope to see you on the channel very soon.